Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church.
Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. This morning's service is a little bit different. It's a special service. We are uh, taking part of uh, John Wesley's Covenant Renewal Service, and uh, sorry about that. And uh, as a part of that service, I thought it would be uh, good to experience that as uh, John Wesley intended, and so I uh, robed up for the occasion for uh, for John Wesley, and because uh, this is what you would have probably seen, minus the mic, you would have seen uh, someone in front uh, with a robe leading you through this service as we uh, together renew uh, the covenant that was made for us 
um, through uh, Jesus Christ by God. So this morning uh, we'll be doing that. We'll also, uh, part of the service will be communion. So if you um, would like to take a moment to, at some point during the service, to get yourself some uh, bread and, and juice or whatever you might want to be uh, using as elements this morning, um, take a, a moment to do that. Um, so that will be a part of the, toward the end of the service. Um, also, this week is our uh, Thanksgiving um, collection week is the end of uh, uh, today, is the end of that. Uh, so if you have um, not brought in your, your uh, Thanksgiving uh, items for the baskets that will be delivered tomorrow, you have today till 11 o'clock to do that. We'll still be, somebody will be here at the church to allow you to, the doors will be open so you can come in and put your items in the basket uh, to be divvied up and distributed tomorrow. Also, you'll see that there are some Christmas decorations, and uh, uh, I know we haven't had Thanksgiving yet, but it's never too early to, to start to, to get ahead and to start thinking about Advent and uh, Christmas, which will be here next week. And I uh, wanted to spend, send a special thanks to Ron and Chris Long for uh, providing the decorating uh, yesterday for us as uh, we prepared uh, for worship this morning. So welcome again. Uh, I pray that your uh, experience this morning of the Wesley Covenant Renewal Service will be a meaningful one for you. If you uh, did not uh, receive the email to tell you to print out or you didn't want to print out uh, the, your, the responses, uh, you can more, more than welcome to just um, uh, listen to the responses and, and uh, just pay attention to the words that are being spoken, uh, both by uh, myself as the, the leader and by um, our praise team who will be helping you with the people part of your uh, liturgy this morning. So um, as we begin for worship, uh, we'll uh, continue with the uh, praise sing, singing for us, Teach Your Children.
Please join me in the greeting. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You who are the, the one true, true God, God who reigns, reigns forever. forever. Almighty God, you search our hearts and you see every part of us. All our desires are known to you and from you no secrets are hidden. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts so we may be perfectly, so that we may perfectly love you and glorify your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as dear, God's dearly loved children, let us pray together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven holy, holy is, is your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on, on earth, on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily, daily bread. And, and forgive our sins, sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead, Lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from, from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, both now and forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you some scripture passages for uh, our time together this morning. Uh, there are four readings that are um, a part of this morning's service. We will only be reading two of them. Uh, the first one we'll be reading is 2 Kings 23, 1 through 3, which is uh, kind of a backdrop to why this service, this particular service, was uh, established. This is kind of the background uh, scripturally for having the service that we're having today. Then the king directed that all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem should be gathered to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him went all the people of Judah, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord keeping his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. All the people joined in this covenant. We will not be reading from Psalm 50 or 1 Peter. I invite you to read those passages at home as you're able to. They are lengthy. Uh, that's why we're not reading them this morning here together. And then first, John, or no, just excuse me, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus is speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, but branches are gathered, such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. I have loved you and abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, I will abide in my love and abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my love may be in you and that your love may be complete. I encourage you to continue reading the Gospel of John, chapter 15, to hear more words from our Lord Jesus on this matter of keeping a covenant.
that your will be done and not my own. Put me where you will and let me serve. In everything I do, let me endure. This is my prayer, Lord, to you. My promise and my vow, strong and true. And the covenant I make on earth, let it be fulfilled in heaven. Father, Son, and Spirit, hear my cry. Forever I am yours, and you, you are mine. Father, Son, and Spirit, hear my cry. Forever I am yours, and you, you are mine. This is my and my vow strong and true and the covenant I make on earth let it be fulfilled in heaven Let me be employed for you, laid aside for you, lifted high for you, or brought low. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things or nothing. Lord, I am not mine, but yours alone. Let my will be done and not my own. Put me where you will and let me serve. In everything I do, let me And my vow strong and true, and the covenant I make on earth, let it be fulfilled in heaven. Dearly loved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is found in Christ, redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those who have entered into this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is our mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood so that it would last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day God proves his goodness and grace to us, showing us that his promises still stand firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live life for ourselves, but instead to only live for Jesus Christ because he has loved us and given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it is important for us to remember and reaffirm our promises and vows. In this same way, we come today 
to renew our covenant with God. Many generations have done this before us. Today we make the covenant our own, renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. Let us join together in the confession. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ, but sometimes we fall short. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Father God, you have set forth the way of life through your Son, Jesus Christ. We shamefully confess that we have been slow to learn of him and have been reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called to us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us, but we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our friends, but we have passed by them. We have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your unchanging love. We now confess our sins. Please forgive us the poverty of our worship for the selfishness of our prayers. for our inconsistency and unbelief, for the ways we neglect fellowship and your grace, for our hesitation to tell others about Christ, for the ways we deceive ourselves. When we waste time, use them we are pittance forgive us for when we have made excuses for the wrong things we have done and when we have purposefully avoided responsibility forgive us that we have been unwilling to overcome evil with good and that we have not been ready to carry our cross forgive us that we have not allowed your love to work through us to help others and that we have not made their suffering our own. Forgive us for those times when instead of working for unity, we make it hard for others to live with us because of our lack of forgiveness, inconsiderate judgment, and quick criticism. Forgive, Forgive us for when we have not tried to reconcile with others and when we have been slow to seek redemption. Forgive us also for these sins that we silently confess to you now. Now hear these words of assurance. God, the Father of all mercies, is faithful to cleanse us from our sins and restore us to Christ's image. Praise and glory be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us gathered here before the Lord now in covenant commit ourselves to Christ as his servants. Let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable but some are difficult and disgraceful. Some line up with our desires and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we please both Christ and ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Let me be your servant. Let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I give myself completely to your will. 
The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. We accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. Christ is Savior to those who are his true servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. To be his servant is to consent fully to his will. Christ accepts nothing less. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Now confirm this truth in Holy Covenant. Make it a reality in your life in these ways. First, set time apart in your day more than once to be spent alone with the Lord. Seek to perceive God's special care for you and gracious acceptance of you. Carefully think through the words of this covenant and its conditions. Examine your heart, even if you have freely given of yourself to Christ. Name the sins in your life. Reflect on whether you are willing to choose Christ's holy laws and strict commands. Be sure you are clear in all these so that you do not lie to God. Second, uphold a serious spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Do not trust in your own strength and power, but rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength. In this way, he will empower you to keep your promise. Fourth, be determined to be faithful. You have given your heart and life to God. You have opened your mouth to dedicate yourself to the Lord. With God's power, never go back to your former way of living. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with God. Fall on your knees, lift up your hands, and open your hearts. Let us pray together. My righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me now as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness when I have not done your will. You promise mercy if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you rid yourself of every idol in your life. From the bottom of my heart, I hear and now renounce every idol in my life, covenanting with you that I will not commit any known sin. By turning against your will, I turn my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch for any temptation that will lead me away from you. Through Jesus Christ, God offers to be your God again, if you allow him to be. Before all heaven and earth, I here and now acknowledge you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as my Lord and God, I vow to give all of myself, body and soul, to be your servant and to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Jesus Christ is the only way and means to God. God has given us Jesus as the way and means to salvation. Jesus. I here and now accept you 
and the only new and living way. I join myself in covenant with you. I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even unto wash the feet of your servants. With all my power, I accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only God. I renounce my own will and take your will as my new law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. Jesus, I here and now make this covenant with you and accept whatever comes in life. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death will separate me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I here and now willingly take on your yoke and burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I accept them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising I will strive to order my whole life around your direction. I will not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows you, even the thoughts of your heart. O oh God, you know that we have made this covenant today in sincerity, without deceit or reluctance. If you find anything false in us, guide us and help us to set it right. And now, glory be to you, God the Father. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my God and Father. Glory be to you, God the Son, you have loved me and washed me from your sins in your own blood. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit. By your almighty power, you have turned my heart from sin to God. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my comforter and God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. You are mine, and I am yours. So be it. May this covenant that I have made here on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. One of my favorite lines in that whole liturgy that we just shared together is that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend. Think of that, that God is your friend. God is not some faraway, distant entity that is unknown and that you don't know and that doesn't know you. It's someone who is your friend. Someone who is your, your closest friend. And when we think about God as our friend and not our judge, we begin to see God in a, a new light, a light that shows God's love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, God sent his son Jesus on our behalf, that we could be friends with God. And Jesus himself demonstrated this with his own disciples when he tells them that he is their friend. And it was at the last meal that he shared with his friends 
that this covenant was established. This covenant of love. This covenant of grace that was poured out for many. It was through this covenant at this Last Supper. And it is in our recreating that experience this morning of reliving that covenant-making moment when Jesus, with his friends, took bread and he blessed bread and he broke bread and he gave it to his friends and he said friends I want you as often as you eat of this bread to remember me and so this morning God we remember our friend Jesus who shows us what it's like to be your covenant friend who only has the best in mind for us, if we would only listen. And so as we receive this bread, we receive the sign of the new covenant. And after dinner, the same dinner with his same friends, reclining around the table, he took wine and he poured wine out for his friends to share. And he said, this wine is my blood of the new covenant. This this covenant that, that makes us friends with God and makes God our friend, even as Jesus is our friend. And he said to Take this wine, and as as often as you drink this wine, remember me. And so, God, this morning, we remember our friend Jesus and the blood that was shed for us so that we might live for him by serving the world and sharing your love for all. For you truly are the friend of all. Amen.
May our God, who establishes covenant relationships with those who seek to enter the kingdom, be with you always. May Jesus Christ, who seals the new covenant with his blood at the cross, bring you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide your life both now and forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Spirit. 